Yeah, our next speaker is Nathan Harder. And um, this, we don't have a picture yet. Have you plugged in your? Oh, that usually helps, doesn't it? Okay, we have pictures on the left and right, not in the middle, but that's that's okay. We can we can uh, kick it off. Balan, do you need any help carrying any stuff? Okay. Well then, Nathan, please. All right. Good morning. My name is Nathan Harder, and I'm from Cyber Radio Solutions. I'm here to talk about how we use GNU Radio for product testing internally. First up, what does Cyber Radio do? Who are we? Well, basically, we build radios. We focus on making multi-channel tuners with high-performance superhead tuner chains backed up by a lot of channelization and FPGAs. But we have a booth. You guys can go talk to them if you're more interested in the radios. But I'm here to talk about how we use GNU Radio. Um, to do that, I'm going to present a couple, demo a couple applications and kind of show the evolution of how we started using this in-house from the early days when we were just getting started and to what we're doing with it now. Um, I'm going to talk about a interactive demonstration GUI for evaluation of the radios, and then moving on to transmit streaming testing, which we did for basically engineering design verification, and then move on to a coherency test that's actually basically the prototype for what we're going to be doing for our uh, final production testing. Um, but why do we use GNU Radio? I mean, we didn't initially, but I'll talk a little bit about the history of how we evolved our test apps. Initially, when we were small, the radio designers were writing their own test apps using MATLAB, LabVIEW, C, and Wireshark, like this wide array of different tools. They were kind of hard to scale to multiple different radio models, and they were actually fairly hard to distribute to all of our different test PCs. So what we did is we re-implemented a lot of those using our own Python framework with C++ for high-speed data acquisition. Um, that kind of solved our distribution problem because we could package all of it, drop it on any of our Ubuntu machines. We also implemented a common radio API that would let us scale up and adapt to new radio models as we made them. But this was a command line application written in Python, so it was, they're rather slow. One of the production test apps actually takes, you know, like overnight to run for one of the receivers, and we don't really want to wait that long. So we started taking a look at GNU Radio. I mean, we had had some experience with this in other, other arenas, but you know, using the real-time data processing in GNU Radio will actually let us speed up some of our tests by quite a bit. And also, we use GNU Radio Companion a lot. Our initial applications were command line, mostly because I don't really like writing GUIs. And GRC actually handles all of that for me, so I can focus on the things that I actually want to do, which is not GUIs. So um, the first application we wrote was a really basic demo GUI. And this was mostly our, you know, our continuation of the getting started with GNU Radio demo. So we could learn how to use it. We could take our command API that we developed for our Python test code. We could wrap it in a block. And we could also start building our own data sources for the radio. Um, we offered this to customers basically as an evaluation tool so they could use, so they could do basic RF performance evaluation on their own to make sure we're not lying on our data sheets. And they could assess how, this, how the radios will actually fit into their systems. Um, and here it is running. I've got one of our radios stashed under the podium. I mean, it's really fairly basic. We just use some of the QT display widgets, the really nice GUI and water, or spectral display and waterfall. Um, and with the control block that we wrote, you know, that, that allows us to connect a lot of the analog and digital controls to, you know, the actual radio, our actual radio ICD. Internally, it's really quite basic, but the first block we started with was our control block. This just wraps our Python command API and, um, but then once we started using the UDP sources here, we found out that uh, you know, with the Vita 49 framing we use in our radios, kind of had to start building some of our own. So we could do flexible Vita 49 frame parsing, handle 
different endianness of the packets and frame sizes actually fairly flexibly and quickly. Um, but all in all, this is a pretty basic application. And I'll skip these slides. I added screenshots in case the demo didn't work. Um, so further down the line, you know, we built a lot of receivers. As we were starting to build our first transceiver, you know, we had to learn a little bit about transmitting out of the radio. You know, receiving from the FPGA side is fairly easy. You just grab samples from the A to D, filter them, packetize them, and send them on out. For the transmit side, especially when you're running from a client PC, um, you know, your clock's never going to be in sync with your radio. So you know, we had to build our own transmit streaming library, and we also had to build in a lot of controls to test all of the new FPGA features we had dropped in for the upconverters, you know, like buffer management and DAC management as well. So this basic application, what we do is we synthesize a couple signals in GNU radio, send them to our sync blocks through the uh, independent transmit channels, and so we don't have to use a spec and to take a look at the output. We just loop that back into the receive channels on the radio and use our own data source blocks with really basic plots just so we can see what's going on. But the main purpose of this is for us to actually exercise all the various controls in the radio. So what we have going on here is down in the lower right-hand side, those are the signals we're synthesizing in GNU Radio, just a couple basic CW tones. Um, up here we have the wideband data received from our radio, which is um, you know, color coding we use, so you know, transmitter ones loop back into RF1. So what we're sending out here, it's a basic visual verification that what we're actually receiving is relatively free of distortion. Um, we're not really concerned with using spec ANDs here because we don't necessarily care about phase noise and all of that for this. Um, yeah, and then down here on the side, we have all these controls for the digital parameters. We can set you know, our sample rates, our analog center frequencies, digital center frequencies. Um, and as part of actually tweaking our transmit control library, we added all these options for how we update our flow control algorithm, whether we're doing it based on buffer occupancy or periodically. Um, and I also took a look at UHD because that was a really good example of how they solved exactly the same problem. And additionally, we have the really simple control so you can change the, uh, the, the synthesized frequency. There's a lot of latency at the sample rate we're running. So there it goes. Um, so inside this application, like the other one, our signal flow is really basic. We have our Vita 49 receivers that are just feeding some of the GUI widgets. But what we did end up implementing was somewhat atomic control blocks for the different elements in our radio. So we can drop one of these on here to control a tuner or a down converter. Um, and we started looking at async messaging for external control of these as well. So for like control and status, we formalized our interface over here, just use JSON over the async messaging. It works out really well. Um, it also lets us hook up like the PDU sync so we can get external applications in the mix as well. Um, and then for things like the tuners, we added the frequency sync, so the click to tune and the GUI widgets work really well. And down here we have our sync block, which is really just like, similar in concept to the usurp sync, where we have our, C, our base C++ library that's actually managing the transmit client, and this is a really thin wrapper on top of that implementation. Um, but interestingly, one thing we found out here was when we tried to uh, drop the signal source in here, just gen, uh, synthesize the sinusoid to stream out to the radio, we found out that at the high sample rates we needed, the signal source actually couldn't keep up. But if you broke it out into a constant source and a rotator, everything was fine. But most of the work in this GUI, the signal flow is really simple. Most of the work in the GUI was actually just dropping all of these, a multitude of parameters and variables and GUI widgets. And you know, this is a lot of stuff to manage, but I greatly prefer this to actually writing any of the GUI code by hand. I, 
I really have to hand it to the GNU Radio Companion crew because that is an excellent tool. So the final example is a phase coherency test for the transceiver. You know, we have a lot of multi-channel radios and I started out doing DF, so when I get a multi-channel radio, I think about phase coherency. Um, but this application is also a prototype for what we wanted to do to replace all of our existing test applications. Um, so the, the basic point of this test, though, is it's going to verify that we have a constant phase offset between either the transmit or the receive channels in the radio when we're running it in coherent mode. To do this, you know, we have a special block we wrote that actually uploads a uh, snapshot, a PN signal waveform. It actually uploads that to the radio and just initiates loop playback so we don't have to worry about streaming samples off the uh, host computer. Again, we're using RF loopback from our transmit into our receive channels so we can actually just use the radio to test itself. Um, and then on the other end, we're getting the data back into GNU Radio to do cross-correlation measurements so we can gather phase statistics. Ah. And here it is. Um, I'll run through the basic GUI displays real fast. Down here in the lower right, we have a receive signal. Um, it looks rather boring. We were just sending out a PN sequence, unfiltered BPSK. It's sufficient for what we need. Um, up top is our cross-correlation output. So you have your, your normalized cross-correlation magnitude versus delay. And then down here, this polar plot is actually a history plot of your cross-correlation peak. We're using the phase of our cross-correlation output peak to actually do our phase, our channel channel phase measurements. Um, the neat thing about doing it this way is we base it on the cross correlation output. Even if we drop samples or if the radio channels become unsynchronized, um, if we use the cross correlation peak, that will give us the same phase value with, uh, with any delay removed. If you zoom in down here pretty far, you can actually see that's not just one dot. It's it's a spread of samples as we're updating our measurements over time. And the spread of that is essentially your, the variance of our measurements. Um, also, what this, this application is doing, we're basically measuring the phase offset between channels across tuning cycles or across power cycles. But I'm not going to power cycle the radio here. Um, but what's going on is this application is actually taking a set of measurements at a given frequency. It's tuning off and then tuning back and repeating the measurements so it can build up a history and actually verify that everything's working. Um, you know, if we end up running the part of the radio in non-coherent mode, uh-oh. OK, so I won't do that. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at what's inside here. Now, the entire idea behind this application was I wanted to see just how much logic I could build inside one GNU Radio block and have the entire application generated using GRC. Instead of writing my own top block that has all the management logic in there and rely on hierarchical blocks, I want to see if we could just do the whole thing in one. So the core of this application is actually just in this one block. It's our test controller. This is what manages all of our test logic as it iterates through different frequencies and configurations. Um, it has ports that utilize the same interface that we implemented for our radio control blocks. We send in out JSON over async messaging so we can communicate in between the blocks. The snapshot playback block is a separate, you know, it's a separate one. It's what a, what's actually generating the uh, RPN sequence and uploading it to the radio. It's triggered from the coherent test controller. And as the data comes in to the application from our UDP source blocks, you know, we have this cross-correlation block. You know, it has the, the vector output so we can get the nice GUI displays and the constellation plot. But the main part is we're using the same JSON interface to spit out our measurement results back to the test controller. Um, one thing that you may have noticed in the GUI is there are no controls. This isn't meant to be an interactive application. 
We have the GUI here just so you have a plot you can look at, so you can feel good that, some, that the test is actually working. But in the long run, we don't really need a GUI. So where do we go from here? Well, since we made this presentation, we've actually taken the coherency test and we started building up more receiver test applications. So we can take a look at tuner gain, noise figure, third order intercept, and then actually doing some iterative optimizations on these so we can meet specs but actually kind of hit you know, optimal points as opposed to just minimizing one and hoping the rest all work. The end goal is we're actually gonna take all of these and build a completely automated test suite for the products. Um, you know, we found through the coherency test that actually speeds up you know, some of the test approaches by quite a lot. Instead of waiting overnight to see if a radio will pass specs, you know, this can be done in like an hour or so. Um, so in the end, over time, we built up our own library of different components. Um, we have Cyber Radio Driver, which is our Python API. That's our control API for all the radios. Um, and then LibCyber Radio is what handles a lot of our low-level functions. You know, for LibCyber Radio, I basically, you know, I've used usurps in the past and basically looked at what UHD did and copied their exact approach because it works. <laughs> and then we have GR Cyber Radio, which is really just a thin wrapper around a lot of the LibCyber Radio components um, with a couple extra little features that we added in, things like a vectorized log 10 function that's faster than the normal GNU Radio one because I use some of the Volk functions. Um, and I guess one thing I didn't really touch on that's also in our GitHub repo is we have this little script that we called MakeDeb. It's kind of this magic script that one of, uh, one of my colleagues wrote that will take any of our CMake projects or a Python module with a working setup.py and we just run it on there and it actually produces the dev package for ourselves. So in the end, to distribute all these applications internally, our Jenkins server just runs MakeDev on some of the components and uploads it to our internal apt repo and all of our test machines can be updated pretty much immediately. And that brings me to the end. Thanks for your time. And Perfect timing, we're right on track. Okay, do we have any questions? We have one over here. Where's the mic person? Trip is over there. Do we have anyone else who wants to ask any questions? We can queue them up. Can you come over here, Trip? Thanks. And no more questions? Or the oh, there we go. Okay. Stop launching. A couple questions. Um, uh, one is: Are the Vita forty nine uh, blocks? Do you have those as separate um, blocks that can be uh, can be uh, used separately from the other? Yes, in the GR Cyber Radio package, our I, I, I think we have like five different versions of Vita processors as we kept changing our minds on how we wanted to implement them. But they're actually all self-contained blocks in the GNU Radio library, so they're really flexible cool. on their uh, nice. on, on how they can unpack or unpacketize, parse the frames, and give you the information. Right. They do stream tagging as well, useful. which is useful. The other question is on your phase coherency. Are you looking at that over time temperature? You know, it looked like your plot just kind of. Them, but yeah, that one was just the prototype working on a single frequency. The, the, the full up version can sweep the entire frequency range of the radio. Um, as part of the work we're doing now to build the whole test suite, we're adding um, test equipment control so we can even drop the thing in a temp chamber and do it from, you know, our, from zero C up to whatever the max is for the radio and gather statistics along. Gentleman in the blue shirt. Yeah. What is your approach going to be to actually automate the, 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 the application? Are you going to use a script, or what internal features of GNU Radio might you use? Um, actually, what I was doing basically with that test control block, how it's rather disconnected from all the signal processing, um, since we defined all the interfaces to the various radio control and measurement blocks, may end up actually taking the test controller out of GNU Radio having it be a separate application 
um, since it's really just the state machine logic for initiating the various tests. So we'll probably just have a separate application that's running the state machine and launching GNU Radio as needed to, um, to execute the specific measurements we want at a given time. So I, I actually want to go back to, I have a question, sorry. I want to go back to something you said. So uh, one of the things that I get hammered on all the time are Vita 49 framers and D-framers within GNU Radio. And like no more than six months ago, I started blasting emails to everyone I knew that used Vita 49 asking, have you written a block that you've made available? And I could not find a block that was available. So I just want to confirm, you're saying that, that Cyber Radio has written Vita 49 framers and D-framers that make use of GNU Radio stream tags and you put them on GitHub? Yes. All right, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and one, uh, yeah, like one thing the coherency test is it's actually using the timestamp tag. So like if the cross correlation delay is non-zero, we can take a look at the timestamps from the data itself to. Do you want to help us write a Vita 49 to SigMF translation block? Sure. Awesome. That deserves another round of applause. <laughs> is, uh, is the next presenter here, Adam? Yeah, you can start walking up. Um, I don't think there's any more questions for Nathan. I just want to quickly want to mention that um, Cyber Radio Solutions is another sponsor of the GNU Radio Conference. Without the sponsors, we could not run this uh, conference. So thank you very much for that, as well as your talk. Okay, you can set up. Oh, you have the. Um, can you just help? No, oh, sorry. 